So if you're like me and you constantly get a lot of ideas, I want to show you a technique for maximizing the productive efficacy of those ideas. And the technique is transcription. It's speaking your ideas quickly and easily into some sort of dictation device, probably your phone, anytime in any place. And then when you accumulate a bunch of those recordings, you then put them into a tool. And the tool that I use in particular, there are many of them, but the one that I like the best, and I think it's currently a market leader and is going to be a market leader for some time, they seem to be ahead of the curve on many things, is a tool called Descript. And I'm going to actually walk you through how I use it because if you really commit to building a practice of, of using this, you're going to see that it essentially multiplies the, the productive value of any particular idea unit, if you will, because it allows you to quickly and easily convert it into multiple other formats. And if you get into recording your ideas or thoughts on video, then you have even more leverage for producing video, audio, and text, all in essentially one editing process. So when you first log in, the screen will look something like this. Go ahead and just click new project. And I'm assuming you have some sort of dictation on file. Move it from your phone onto your computer. If that's how you recorded it. And on this screen you see here, all you have to do to get started is find the audio file and drag it up to here and drop. Okay. And here it will give you some options. So the automation of the transcription is really quite good, especially for short clips. Uh, the editing required to polish it up is not a problem. For higher value, longer transcriptions, like important meetings or a highly valuable podcast or something like that, then uh, you might want to pay for the white glove and have a human make it perfect. But for this purpose, go ahead and just keep it automatic. And it's assuming it's just you, you don't need to detect multiple speakers. Go ahead and hit transcribe. And it's now uploading the audio file to the cloud and transcribing it. So when it's done, this is what it looks like. And as you can see, what's insanely cool about this is here you have a text editor and here down below you have an audio editor. And these two are in sync. That's what this does for you. So if you edit the text, it will also edit the audio. Or if you edit the audio, it will also edit the text. Um, pretty awesome, to be honest. And as you can see, it's pretty good. You can kind of already pretty much understand the, the point I'm making just by reading it. Uh, but I want to share with you pretty much what I have found to be the quickest and most efficient workflow for this type of dictation. What I do is I start by just editing the text for spelling and formatting. And I try to do one through just as quickly as possible. A little pro tip here is it helps to do this process um, as quickly after the dictation as possible because that way you remember in your short-term memory what you said. If you do this weeks later, it, editing is a little bit more tricky because uh, you might not really remember what you said. So you might have to look into the audio to understand what you meant by a possibly misspelled word. So I'll just uh, do that real quick. I'll just go through just for spelling and formatting. By the way, uh, the hotkey is Command E, switches between text editing and actual uh, media editing. So you can just change the superficial uh, spelling and, and grammar of the actual text without affecting the underlying audio, or you can affect the underlying audio. So if you just want to do superficial spelling stuff, you want to be in this green mode uh, that says correct text. And just press command E to switch on and off. If you want to actually edit the audio with the text editing, then you want to be in the not green mode, the pure white mode, um, edit media. So like I said, at the very beginning, I will just do very quickly a superficial text and formatting editing. So uh, I will command E into the green mode and just do that very quickly. So once I'm done with that, I will now edit for substance. So if there are whole sentences I don't like or unnecessary filler words, I will just select them, highlight them, and then delete them. And it will delete it from the text and the audio. Uh, similarly, if there are 
blank spaces because sometimes I take 30 seconds to pause and think. You can do that when you're doing your own dictation. It's not a problem. All you have to do is edit out the white space. So for instance, I'll show you. Go down here and boom. So once I've done the spelling and the basic formatting and I have a representation of, oh yeah, that's what I said. Then I get to work on uh, just editing the substance. Usually there's not too much to do, but you can if you want to or need to. And by the way, this is generally the order I go in, superficial than substance. But in practice, especially when you get good at the hotkey, in practice you you tend to do a little bit of both as you go. Like when you're when you're editing for superficial stuff at the beginning, if you see a whole sentence or two that you know you're going to cut, you just switch into the media mode and cut it while you're editing the spelling. Okay, so now I'm going to edit the substance. So for instance, just to give you an example, you see how wherever I click, it will go to a different part of the timeline down below. In terms of their moral worldview, that's kind of a stupid sentence that's not really, or clause that's not really necessary. So I'll just cut it. Otherwise, I generally am content with this. It's not a genius insight or anything. It's just a question, really. But it's the type of thought or idea that's at least worth writing down and putting into a, a file with other related thoughts. You never know how these things are going to accumulate. Uh, so what I will now do is edit the white space down below. I like to zoom out so you can see it. And this just takes a second. Really not too bad. A little pro tip here if you're really clever with audio editing is you can run it through another app like Premiere or Audacity and use a filter to cut white space. So, or I'm sorry, silence. And if you're doing really long dictations, like maybe let's say you get good at this and maybe you will sit down for 30 minutes and dictate a whole series of thoughts but you take long pauses. Uh, well, it's not a problem if you run it through Audacity or Premiere first, and you just run the real quick filter. It says truncate any silence greater than two or three seconds or something like that. Then this little manual process I'm doing right now is totally not necessary, and you can just do it automatically. But for these short little kind of aphoristic ideas that I record... Uh, it's really not hard at all to just do this. It only takes a second, really. All right, so there you go. Now you have a nice little blog post and a little short possible podcast snippet. Uh, you know, the sky's the limit. You could do anything with this stuff. If you want to, I'll just show you very briefly how to export these things. If you go to share, export, you can export just the text. You can export the audio as an MP3. That's all pretty self-explanatory. Now, you might be thinking that for a small paragraph such as this one, it might have been easier to just sit down and type it out. And depending on how you work, that's possible. But I really don't think so. I think it is worth it doing this type of method if you can for a few reasons. The first is that for me personally, I find it just way less cognitively taxing to speak thoughts. I find it easy, uh, kind of fun even, uh, more so than sitting down to type, which I find to be a kind of hard, difficult, taxing process, which is enjoyable, but it's just a bit more tense, I find, personally. But really, the other reason, aside from the obvious fact that you just get more content out of this method, obviously, if you sit down and type it, you're not going to get an MP3 file automatically of you speaking that. The other thing is that I'm really bullish on these technologies in general. In other words, I think over the next couple of years, transcription is going to get even better. And once it's nearly perfect, then doing this stuff and already having these routines and workflows as part of your working habits, uh, it's really going to be worth worthwhile uh, because the time it takes to edit is going to be even less. I think it's going to decrease significantly quite soon, rapidly. Now, you could argue that cuts both ways because... It's also going to get easier to turn written text into authentic sounding audio of your own voice, for sure. So you could argue that really what everyone should be doing is specializing in whatever modality they're most 
productive in. And that's possible. But in general, other things equal, you always want to prefer the modality that is most information rich. Because a modality that's most information rich will easily translate into less information rich modalities. So but even better than audio would be video, just simply because on a technical level, in terms of bits, there's much more information in video. You can easily turn video into audio and text much more effectively and efficiently and reliably than you can turn text into audio and video. It is true, the AI is going to make it possible to do those types of things, but that's gonna take much longer and it's gonna be much further down the line. So in general, if you don't have a strong preference either way, always go for whatever modality has the most information richness. In this case, audio is more information rich than text. So that's why I would urge you, if you don't have strong preferences in favor of typing, to really spend some time playing around with and practicing dictation.